Today I'll be reviewing the newest generation of the Honda Accord. This is the all new and redesigned 2023 Honda Accord. Now many of you guys know the Honda Accord is one of the best selling sedans out there. And that's because Honda Accords traditionally have been really, really good sedans. They look great, they drove great, they were comfortable, spacious, had all the features and safety systems. Did anything change with this newest 11th generation of Honda Accord? Well, in this review video, I'll tell you everything there is to know about this brand new Accord so you can decide if this is the right sedan for you. All right, let's get started. First, I want to give a big thanks to Honda of Lao, which made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Honda, make sure you check them out. Their URL is in the description below. All right, first, let's talk about the exterior look and the overall dimensions of this new Honda Accord. If you're looking at width and height, dimensions nearly identical to the previous generation, but the length grows almost four inches four inches, which is significant. It makes you wonder, is this Honda Accord still considered a mid-size sedan or has it turned into a full-size sedan because it is enormous? The previous generation of Honda Accord was already very big. It felt limo-like on the inside and this one is even bigger. I'll talk about the space in a little bit, but first let's look at the outside because this new Honda Accord has no resemblance to the 10th generation. If you look at the back, I like how the taillights are. It's just like a giant strip from one side to the other, right? There's a lot, it's smoked and you have a lot of black inlays, right? So it kind of sticks out. It has that futuristic look as it pops a lot, especially with a white car like this, right? So I do think the back does look better. Now this one I'm driving, unfortunately doesn't have any exhaust tips, but if there was dual chrome exhaust tips or finishers, it will look a whole lot better. But if you look at a side angle, the side angle eh, it looks okay. Now, because this one is the EX, it comes with 17 inch alloy wheels. It's good that they are alloy wheels and I think the overall design and shape looks good, but this big sedan definitely would look a whole lot better with bigger 18 or 19 or even 20 inch wheels. But if you look at the front end, that's where I think the modernness and edginess, it really depends on your opinion because I think the front end has been toned down quite a lot, quite a lot. And you do still see the sleek headlights on both sides. You see the daytime running lights and they pop out, but the middle grill and the bottom bumper, it's toned down in my opinion. Overall, the exterior, I think it's subjective. It depends on if you like this new look or not, right? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like the look of this new Accord versus the 10th generation. Okay, fortunately I just had a straightaway, so I tested the acceleration. I went from about 30 to 60 miles per hour. So as for the powertrain, let me talk about that next. Acceleration is nearly identical, especially if you pick the non-hybrids. This one, the EX, this is still using the same 1.5 liter turbo engine from the previous generation. And actually there's nothing wrong with this engine. It's producing 192 horsepower, about 192 pound feet of torque, right? And you know, this acceleration test I, I, I just conducted, it, it felt okay. It didn't feel slow. It didn't feel like the cord is too heavy or bogged down or anything like that. It was adequate, it was adequate. But of course, this Accord is not very fast. The previous Accord did have at one point in time a very powerful two liter turbo engine. And that one was a detuned Civic Type R engine. And that was really, really fun. But this one, on the other hand, isn't bad. So acceleration is very similar. Unfortunately though, with the lower trims like this EX, you get a CVT transmission. That's the thing. So it's not automatic, but Hondas have tuned their CVTs very differently. So if you're driving around, you really, you really can't tell. You even see the RPMs drop. They, they made it seem like it's automatic, but, it, but it's not. So as for powertrain, I would say it's pretty much the same as before. Now, on the upper trims, you get only hybrid models. Okay, and the hybrid models, of course, are more fuel efficient. 
and a little bit, slightly more powerful, not all that much, about 10 more horsepower, right? So if you're looking for max fuel efficiency, max power, then of course you look at a hybrid, but even the base engine, the non-hybrid engine, I think in my opinion, is still good. Now there's one downside to this powertrain though, and that's fuel economy. Somehow fuel economy goes down versus the last generation. So overall combined, it goes down by one MPG. It's still not bad. It's 32 miles per gallon combined, but the last generation was 33. So you do lose a little bit, a little bit of fuel economy. Now, as for the drive itself, this Accord is very similar to the previous one, and that is fantastic. And that's because the previous Accord was so good with its drive, with how comfortable it was, how spacious it was, right? And it's no different with this new Honda Accord. So right now, as I'm cruising, it's very quiet. The Accord is very quiet. I don't hear anything from the outside in terms of wind noise, cars passing by, very nice. Engine also, very little. I would say road noise a little bit higher, just a tad higher, but overall, you're getting a very quiet ride. And as for visibility, good still all around. Big windows, right? Blind spot also very good. Visibility out back is very good. And the seating position is also good. Even though this is a sedan, this is not a SUV, so you're not sitting high up, right? But overall, you get a good mix of like snugness, like sportiness, and an airiness. You're not too low to the ground and you still feel amazingly open inside. And that's, that's awesome, that's awesome. Now, as for the suspension, I definitely feel the suspension a little bit more. It's hard to tell it's similar, but I do think the suspension is a little bit stiffer than the previous generation. Because I remember the 10th generation, I reviewed many of them, and the cord was butter smooth, butter smooth over all pavement, all bumps. This one, I do feel a little bit more. So it could be because Honda with this generation is trying to give it a bit more sportiness. Maybe the suspension is more sport tuned even though that's kind of weird because this is the EX that I'm driving, this is not the Sport. But I do feel a little bit more from the road. And also, what's kind of weird is because this one comes with 17 inch wheels. Normally, you would get a little bit more bumpiness with the, like the 18, 19, or 20s, but this one is 17 inch wheels. So I kind of expected the ride to be a bit smoother. But I will say, it is, it is a little bit tad bumpier than I expected. But, you know, compared to other sedans in this class, very similar. As for steering, I think this Accord is pretty good in terms of steering feel. I think it's very precise. There's basically no play in the steering wheel, none. Any little input in the steering wheel, you feel it with the Accord. So it's very precise, no play. The, the weight, is okay, a little bit on the heavier side. So be prepared for that. It is a little bit heavier, and overall, I think the steering is, is good. More, a little bit more towards the sporty side. Again, kind of like the suspension. Um, it does seem like Honda's putting a more emphasis on, on, on control and sportiness. But as the steering wheel itself, it has been redesigned, the overall look, much better, much more modern, less clutter, a lot less buttons. I really wish this was a leather wrap steering wheel. It is not, right? But the thickness feels good. And I, I like the modern look. It, it does look good. Now something else that didn't change and is still great with this Accord is the interior size. The interior size, it's just so massive in here. <laughs> When I reviewed the 10th generation Accord versus the current generation of the, the Toyota Camry, I'm like, man, if you look at the dimensions, the two cars are so similar in length, width, and height, but there's a vast difference, vast difference, a huge notable difference in terms of interior size. 
and it's no different. The inside of this Accord just feels so much bigger compared to, say, a Camry. It's not even close. It's, it's, it's night and day, and this one is huge. I mean, up front, it is absolutely huge. There's plenty of width, plenty of shoulder room and hip room. There's plenty of headroom, right? Uh, it just feels very, very big inside this Accord. Now, the second row is where it's even more impressive. The second row is limo-like. I'm five feet 10 and look at it, behind my driving position, I have like six to eight inches of leg room and about two to three inches of headroom, but you have enormous amount of leg room in the second row. It's, it's a big difference between this and take a look at the Camry second row leg room. And it's not just interior space, the trunk is also enormous. It's huge, and if you wanted more trunk space, of course, you could fold down the second row seats. And even the opening, the opening to get into the second row from the trunk is big, it's enormous. So everything about this Accord feels big, big. That's why at the beginning I questioned, is this really a mid-size sedan, or is this a full-size sedan? I, I can't even tell anymore because I don't review a lot of full-size sedans, but this feels absolutely huge. Since we're talking about the inside, let me talk about the interior cabin and some of the features you'll find on the inside. Well, the interior cabin obviously has been redesigned just like the outside, and it's very similar to the new CRV, the HRV, the new Civic. It has that same design language. However, it's different than a new Pilot. I actually wish this interior was more like the Pilot's interior than the Civic's interior. And that's because I find the Pilot's interior to be more usable, a little bit more elegant looking, a little bit more space and cubby holes and stuff like that. This one isn't bad, but I just, I got spoiled by the Pilot's interior. This one has that honeycomb grill on the dash, spreads from one side to other, and it does look like Honda changed it up a little bit. So it does look more unique. It pops a little more and you have the vent controls, right, inside. But you have that and then you have a large pop-out screen in the middle, and of course then you have the climate controls and your center console. Now in terms of the infotainment system and the screen, you have two options a seven inch or a new massive 12.3 inch. This one unfortunately comes with a seven inch, but overall I would say this still operates pretty good. You have some large buttons on the bottom. You still have the volume knob and the scroll wheels, right? So it's very easy to navigate. So that is good. Now, what's not good about this is if you have the seven inch infotainment system, you don't get wireless Apple CarPlay nor wireless Android Auto, only the, the wired ones. So the wireless ones come with a bigger screen. Unfortunately, you can't opt for the bigger screens unless you up the trim level, right? So that's the unfortunate thing. But overall, I think this is pretty good. It's an upgrade from the previous generation. Now, you do get a larger screen inside a gauge cluster. It's a 10 inch screen. This screen actually is really nice. It actually is nice on both sides. You do have like an analog heat and your fuel, but inside of course you get your two gauges, now digital tachometer, speedometer. Inside the middle there, you see a digital speedometer and your safety system and both sides you can scroll. A scroll on the left side, for example, you want to scroll through your radio station, stuff like that, you can. And on the right side, you can scroll through your trip computer, safety systems, settings, and all that good stuff. I like this. Actually, I like the way it looks. It's bright enough, it pops out, the resolution is quite nice, right? So I do think that screen is pretty good, and I like the fact that you get that in all the cords, right? So that's a big upgrade. Now, as for climate control, pretty simple. With this EX, you do get heated seats, so that's a nice addition. Underneath, you have a couple USB ports, well-placed. You have a little space for your phone. I'm sure that's where the wireless charger goes if you have a upper trim level of the Honda Accord. Also, you do have eco mode, and you have a sunroof on top. Not a panoramic one, just a regular sunroof inside this EX. 
Also, what you can't see with this EX is the suite of Honda Sensing safety features that have all been upgraded since the last generation. You still get all the basic essentials, for example, like collision mitigation, collision warning, right? Blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, you know, stuff like that. But the adaptive cruise control, they labeled it like traffic jam assist now, so it's better. So that means it could actually come to a stop and go in traffic. So basically it's more of a semi-autonomous driving. So all the safety systems have also been updated, so that's great. And all of it's included, you don't have to pay extra for it. The seats, I didn't even talk about the seats. The seats are actually quite comfortable in this EX. They're cloth, right? But they hold me in very well. And these seats are very, very comfortable, both front and rear. I think the seats, good. As for versus the last generation, last generation definitely didn't look as good. These seats are designed better. They look better, but the comfort is close to being the same. Now, because this is the EX, a lot of places on the dash, and on the, the, the center console filled with plastic, right? Hard plastic. But I will say this, even with all the plastic inside here, you know, the fit and finish is still better. It's just the quality and fit and finish is just better. And even the places that do have the, the plastic, the plastic still feels better than <laughs> the previous plastic, uh, as weird as that sounds. Um, but yeah. And there's still actually some leather, even on the door panel, just a little bit of leather, right? And soft material. So overall, I would say the interior is still greatly approved versus the last generation. There is one glaring thing that bothers me about this new Honda Accord, and that is when you're in the rear, as a second row passenger, there are no vents. Yes, no vents at all. At least give the passenger vents, right? No vents back there, and also no ports of any kind. No USB ports, not even a 12V outlet. And those things bother me, right? Just putting at least one port, one USB port, or at least a pair of vents would be better than nothing. So that's my biggest gripe about this new Accord. Now, as for pricing, there are five different trim levels to the brand new Accord. Two are non-hybrids, and four are hybrids. Unfortunately, the lower trims are all non-hybrids, and unfortunately, the upper trims are all hybrids. The base Honda Accord the LX starts right above $27,000. This one I'm driving, which is the next one up, the EX, starts right under $30,000. So if you wanted something basic like this EX and you wanted a hybrid, you, you can't get it you have to opt for one of the upper trims. Now, after the EX, you have the Sport Hybrid, and that one starts under 32,000. Then you have the EXL Hybrid. That one starts around 33,500. Then you have the Sport L Hybrid, which starts around 34,000, a little bit under. And finally, you have the Touring, which is a range topping trim, the Touring Hybrid, and that starts under $38,000. Now, I also said it's unfortunate because say you wanted a Touring that was a non-hybrid, you don't have that option. So Honda kind of locked you in. If you want one of the upper trims, you have to choose the hybrid powertrain but if you're selecting one of the lower trims, you have to get a non-hybrid, a normal natural Asprey engine. So you have to decide what you want. Is this Honda Accord as good as the previous generations? Well, I would say yes. Keep in mind, I'm comparing everything to the 10th generation. And the 10th generation, honestly, was just light years better than the competition at the time. So to be even better than last generation, it's a tough challenge. It's a hard challenge, right? But I do think Honda did make this new 2023 Honda Accord even better in many ways, right? And in some ways, it's equal, but very little ways, I would say, it goes backwards. So overall, this is definitely a win. And I definitely think it is probably the best sedan you could buy today. And this is not even a a range topping one. If you're shopping for a sedan, a very spacious and comfortable sedan, you should definitely, definitely go test drive a new Honda Accord.
All right, guys, smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, and leave in the comments below your thoughts about this brand new Accord. Did Honda do enough or not enough? Are there things you wish they added or didn't add? Make sure you leave all your thoughts in the comments. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.